Oh, it has been a great run with this device the second time around. It has just been great. This is another follow up on the Microsoft Surface Duo. And this is another follow up for all those people out there who are still on the fence. <laughs> well, this is another one to try to help you get you over that fence, put that other leg over. I think you'll be totally happy once you get over. So I now have the graphite bumper on here. And if you haven't seen the video on that, be sure to check that out. Um, I just really love the design of this and I probably won't skin this. I'm sure maybe in a couple of months, maybe I'll decide to skin it. But for now, I like the offset of the graphite and the white. I just, I love the way that looks. I just think it looks so nice, clean, elegant. It's really nice. So for, if you're on the fence still, the hardware is some of the best hardware you'll ever experience. You got the fingerprint reader right there, power button volume rocker and I like that they have the something as simple as this right here they separated the power button and the volume rocker when it has a fingerprint reader in there yeah I like that they did that I like they did that shout out to LaShawn I was checking out his latest video thumbs up team pixel so we're going to talk about a few things in here that what you probably could expect if you decide to get this device now if you look on my device in the settings here I might have 110 apps total maybe uh and this is including the installed pre-installed apps and some of them obviously you know are the microsoft things i could remove but i don't keep a lot of apps on my device i just don't do it i only put apps on there that i feel like i am going to use and i highly recommend that you do the same thing yes it has almost like it's pretty much almost perfect hardware it's not perfect hardware all the way but it is it's about some of the best hardware you'll ever feel on a device but the software is where it has to improve. So if you're on the fence about getting this device, let me be honest. I don't think we're gonna get anything different unless they, like all these patches that come in, the June security patch, the July, you know, these patches might come in until they decide to release another version of this device. I don't think that we're gonna get any speedier device because this has six gigs of RAM. They're gonna really have to optimize this software. That's what's bogging this device down at times is the software because we all have phones that have less RAM or six gigs of RAM and they don't run like this. But this is a device, not just a phone. So when you consider what you're getting, this is where Microsoft dropped the ball by putting six gigs of RAM in here. This has been a conversation that we've had many times and we'll probably have to continue to have this conversation until we get uh, a, that software security patch or that software update to Android 11, hopefully 12, that just really utilizes what this this device can really do because it, it is very capable running your, your office over here and your website over here, got your mail over here and our video over here. That's just it, it's just crazy. It's crazy. The features and options are totally here, but you need to be able to run those features and options with ease. And for me, they're running with ease, but they're not running with ease. You know what I mean? Like every now and then there's a hiccup, like they're gestures that are in this device. Okay. It's on this side. I'll flip it over. I need to tap to get it over here. That doesn't work all the time. And it shouldn't frustrate you to the point to where you're saying, I'm returning this thing. It shouldn't because you can see, well, I guess that's going to boil down to your patience. The first time I bought this device, I had very little patience. Uh, after about two and a half months of owning it or so, I sold it because there were no security patches. After I sell it, they start rolling in the security patches. So here I am back with it again. So, you know, the gestures in here, like the swiping like up like sometimes, sometimes when I swipe up like that, it'll think it's a long press and I'm not, it'll, it'll go into this screen. And I'm like, wait, I didn't do that. Uh, but this is probably the one that's, might agitate people the most just the flip over gesture but after a while you won't be so frustrated with it you'll just keep it moving and me being the user i am i need to have these two screens at some point or another i need this big wide look right here with the 16 by 9 look i need this i need this because i like how it looks when i'm viewing things all right so another thing about this device that you have to get used to if you decide to buy it flip it over this way you double tap there's that there you go you just saw it real time uh you're gonna need to get to your camera and your camera is on that side of the device so you're gonna have to flip it over to where it's this side uh and you want to get into it and you want to make sure that the camera is always on that side that's if you're going to be using it as a rear facing camera yeah so the camera on here some people have complained that it's trash uh, that it needs gcam i don't think so 
It definitely doesn't have the fastest shutter time. Uh, I'm just grabbing things that are on my desk here because I want to show you the quality like right now. Yes, I have a lot of earbuds on my desk. Uh, but I'm telling you, you will be hard pressed to not like um, the cameras on here um, with regular usage. Where where these cameras really shine, um, and look at how look how good that looks. It doesn't look bad at all. It looks great, man. This is a good high quality camera. It just needs to have the right lighting. That's it. Use the flash if you need to. But one thing you're gonna notice is that um, the cameras are gonna be good. They're not gonna be great when taking video. Um, well, no, they're great when taking video. They're not gonna be spectacular. How about that? Shout out to Spectacular Gadgets. Uh, she, she, she loved hers at one point, but she returned hers. I wonder if she got, I think she got another one. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, yeah, the cameras are not spectacular, but they are great, at least in my humble opinion, because I'm still using the stock camera. Some people have switched over to Gcam. And Gcam, I guess, I watched Eric's video. Hey, you know, I'll admit, it gave it a little bit of a boost. But I'm posting photos from this, and they're good to me. I don't have a, I don't care about it. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm not going to be that person that says, if you want a real camera, you want to take photos, get a real camera. I'm not going to do that because everybody's on a social kick right now. Why go carry around a different camera when you can do it right from your device? Now, they may not be spectacular for video, but I think they're great for video and, and great for photos. Just need the right lighting like all cameras. Now, where they do shine at, surprisingly enough, is in Duo. Duo is fantastic. Now, I won't open up my Duo because there's lots of personal calls on there and stuff like that. I don't want to expose you know, phone numbers from family members and stuff, but nonetheless, they are great for do it looks fantastic man that is the strange part what did they do in the duo app to bring out all the full quality of the the cameras <laughs> it's, it's crazy but it does have a really nice camera for video calls not just in duo in that google chat i've tried it google meet in my, within my email it's great man it's fantastic so that's not an issue now gaming uh and i use gaming i guess in a sense because Gaming is, I've been playing Mortal Kombat on here. I actually have not been testing uh, Asphalt. I've been doing Mortal Kombat. Um, but um, gaming on here, it's no problem, man. It's a Snapdragon 855, and it's pretty much going to please most people. It's going to please most people. You'll be able to play any game you want because when did the Snapdragon 855 become a slouch and just a horrible processor? It's not. It's just that it's coupled with six gigs of RAM and a very loaded skin on top of Android. I mean, it's loaded to the gills. And you gotta be able to use it. So I would suggest when you wanna play a game, clear out everything in memory, start your game up, you'll be fine. Day-to-day -day tasks will be just fine, man. Social media age is where we are. And so people are on social media, TikTok and um, all these different things. You're just, that's where you are. Not anyone in particular, but that's what's happening with our world right now. It's a social media age. So, um, yeah, I use it daily. I mean, um, my SIM card's in here and I'm using it because when I take my SIM card out, uh, and uh, like for my primary slot, it's weird because I'm so used to flipping open an extra screen. Uh, it's just, it's just crazy, man. I don't know. Battery life on here has been great for me. The standby time is something that did improve, um, with, with this last security patch. So right now I'm getting between five to seven hours of screen on time and about 24 hours of use out of this thing. Right now I'm in five hours of usage or five hours off the charger and an hour and 10 minutes of use with 83% left. That's a really good battery. That's that's great battery actually, to me it is. When you consider how thin this device is and you consider what it's competing against, cause yeah, I have this bumper on here, but this thing is still thin even with the bumper. It's thin, look at how thin that is. That's crazy. I mean, it's as thin as the charging port. Ridiculous. So battery on here, to my surprise, is still good. Yeah, it's actually even better. And I say that because I was working this thing out, man, and you know, with extended use, your battery will deplete. You won't, you can't keep a battery that's gonna stay at 100% for the life of the battery of the device, but I think this one is gonna be okay. 
I think they've done a great job on hardware. Uh, I do have something coming in. I won't share it at this point, uh, but I do have something coming in. And so we'll, we'll take a look at that later. It's for the Surface Duo. Some of you guys already know what it is. Uh, I haven't found a car mount yet. There are car mounts out there, but I haven't found one that I like yet. Uh, so yeah, the Surface Duo, man, I mean, what more could you want in a folding device? The price is now right for, for everybody out there, techies and regular consumers. The price on this thing is right. You should not have an issue with spending that cash on it for what you're getting. Yeah, the cameras uh, are not to a lot of people's standards, but they are to a lot of people's standards. You see what I'm saying? So then the hardware, pretty much everyone's going to love the hardware. I don't know anybody who dislike this hardware. And some people might complain, let's get, let's get those black bars at the top. This is the first phone you've seen with black bars at the top? Come on, son, stop it. Just cut it out. You're nitpicking. But you can. Uh, the flip side of that is that you have the right to do so, and I respect it. Those black bars and the, how big it is at the top and bottom, I don't really care about that. Not at this point, because I bought this knowing that they were going to be there. But what I'm telling you is, using this... You'll forget all about that. You'll be so engulfed in the experience, you're just going to be excited to have it. Only one of these right here uh, is, it's just one that I, I just have to recommend you try it, man. Especially if you're a one phone type of person, like you don't want to carry um, a bunch of different uh, devices around. Uh, and you, But you might want a tablet every now and then. You can do it. You can do it with this device. So price is something that we can't ignore. This did launch at uh, somewhat of a horrible price value for consumers uh, when, when you considered how bad the software was initially. But if, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna say this one more time. If you're on AT&T and you see this for $4.99 and you want it, don't get the unlocked version, just get the AT&T version. Because I've seen this drop to $4.99 for, for the 256 gig for AT&T customers. Not on AT&T, but elsewhere. Folks, buy that device. Don't skip over this device. Buy this device when it comes down. Man, come on. Buy this device if it drops to $500 for a 256 gig. Right now, the unlock model is what I recommend because some people might buy the AT&T version thinking it's going to be easy to unlock and then you run into an issue and then you're stuck like Chuck. Only thing you can do is probably return it. Who is Chuck? Some of you guys probably don't know. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, if you can find this for $4.99, folks, and you're on AT&T, just buy it. Don't go back and forth with yourself. Just buy it. And if you are a person who needs it on other carriers like Verizon and Visible and all these other customers, uh, other places, obviously buy the unlocked version. That's your goal. I've used this on Verizon's network. It works flawlessly with no problems. I've used it on Visible, which is Verizon's network. Flawless, no problems. Yes, it works on Google Fi. Yes, it works on the, any, any GSM unlock carrier is going to work on. But more importantly, Verizon customers can grab the unlock version because I believe Verizon sold this in their business section. Even Microsoft still says it, sells it at almost a full price in their business section. Uh, but it's the same phone. They're not getting anything special. you know. So uh, if you're from Verizon and you want this, definitely buy the unlock version. The unlock version is $699. Uh, for a 256 gig and the um, 649 for the 128. I mean, just spend the extra 50 bucks and get the 256 gig, man. You might as well, especially if you're going to keep it and you never know when you might need that storage. So, folks, this is a winner. This is a flat out winner. And this video is for people who are on the fence. I, I'm trying to be as realistic as possible as I can. The software, sometimes there's a hiccup, but it shouldn't be enough to make you say, I'm going to throw this thing out the window. I'm, I'm, I mean, at least for me, that's how I feel. I can't tell you how to feel, but I'm telling you, you'll be so engulfed. In, like your current smartphone. Your current smartphone has something about it that you just really dislike about it, but you're not throwing it out the window. You're working with it. You're working around it, or you're waiting for a fix. And with this device right here, I don't think you have to wait on a fix. I think the more they update the software, the better this will be. But if we're being honest, we're not going to get better cameras than we've, than we've got right here. We're not gonna get any different hardware. They can't send you a tweak to take away the black bars at the top, so don't buy this and then afterwards start saying, man, it's got those large bezels on the top and bottom. This doesn't make any sense. I've tried to give as many camera samples as I can just to show you that you don't have to install Gcam, but installing Gcam, it's not gonna hurt you. All right, I'm, I'm going to say it's not gonna hurt you. But the display on here is beautiful. You got a tablet, you got a phone, you got a multitasking king. 
it's great. Performance is good. It can work around anything you need it to work around. It'll get it done. Lots of features and options here. And if you're a Microsoft person, you're all in with this. You, you probably have this already. And if you're a Surface user and you don't have this, something's wrong. Because the link to Windows is just, it's killer. So, what more can I say? <laughs> it's your man, Jay, man. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed another follow-up. Get off the fence, man. Just jump over the fence. Jump over the fence. You'll thank yourself. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.